Welcome everyone to the Michigan Association of Secondary School Principals podcast series featuring great discussions, insight, and resources on all things related to education and administration. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the MASSP podcast. My name is Ryan Casey and we are uh, hammering through podcasts for season four and I'm really, really excited about today's topic. We're going to be uh, discussing the Unified Basketball League. And I have two guests joining me today. Uh, first, I'll introduce John Thompson, who is the Athletic Director at Brighton Area Schools and helps oversee this program for the KLAA League. Uh, John, good morning. How are you doing? I'm doing outstanding. Yourself? I'm doing well. Thanks so much for being here. We have a, uh, another guest joining the podcast as well, which is Dan Ekinen, who is the Senior Director of Program Leadership for Special Olympics Michigan. Dan, thanks for making it on the podcast today. Hey, pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Well, guys, um, you know, the, the reason I wanted to invite you on is because apparently I've been maybe living under a rock for the last few years, but all of a sudden, the last couple months, I've been seeing this pop up on social media and just I mean, catching some some footage of just some really inspirational, heartwarming stuff with with special needs kids playing basketball, interacting with student athletes and in the community and uh, in it uh, out on the basketball court. And so I've been seeing it kind of trending on social media, if you will. And so I wanted to reach out. But if there are people who are like me have no idea what I'm talking about or haven't seen this, can you guys kind of explain what is the Unified Basketball? Well, I'll, I'll give you the simple definition, um, and then Dan can probably uh, give you a little more detailed account. But, you know, it, it simply is special needs students partnering with our general education students uh, in sport. And, um, you know, it's just uh, an outstanding opportunity to bring people together. Yeah, and uh, to give a little background, um, one, Ryan, you have not been living under a rock. I think everyone knows, or mostly everyone is familiar with Special Olympics and, and what our movement is, but a lot of people haven't heard about um, Special Olympics Unified Champion Schools, which is a strategy for K-12 through schools to change the culture in their buildings by promoting inclusion throughout. And so students do this in, in three areas, inclusive youth leadership, um, they participate in, in school-wide awareness and where they really bring in their entire uh, building population and, and embrace what it means to be unified. And the third piece is uh, what you're seeing with our interscholastic unified uh, basketball leagues is, is unified sports, students with and without disabilities on teams together creating those friendships uh, that carry over from the, the playing service into the hallways, into the classroom. And so uh, we've been very fortunate to, to partner with, with John and their other schools uh, to really promote this through athletics. That's awesome. So can you guys just share, I guess, how did it get started um, and where did the I idea come from really to try and do this and implement this at a, especially a large uh, level through the athletic league there? Sure. Um, well, you know, the unified sports looks different at every school, but uh, three years ago, we, uh, from Special Olympics Michigan, we partnered with the Michigan High School Athletic Association to really promote unified sports to its member schools, and we were trying to figure out what that looks like, you know, what's the tangible piece to that, you know, we have schools doing all these different types of unified sports, but how do we really align with what they're doing? And so I was able to go and, and present at the Michigan Interscholastic Athletic Administrators Association, the MIAAA. And in our presentation was John and his colleague, Brian Gordon. And at the end of the presentation, they said, hey, can we do this as a, as a conference? Can we get our other schools involved and go and play each other? And it was kind of like the light bulb went off where it was what we were trying to find and, and they were willing to, to champion it and, and really take it and move it forward. Um, and so that's kind of how we got started. And I'll let um, John share about how they uh, went back to the KLA and really got things moving. Yeah. Um, you know, on our end in Brighton, uh, we had uh, one of our uh, teachers, one of our classroom teachers, uh, Andy Dupe, who had some experience with it and kind of brought the idea to me and I'm like, Hey, <laughs> let's, let's do it. This is a no brainer. Yep. And um, so we got involved in it. And then as Dan had said, uh, Brian Gordon from uh, Novi uh, and myself were um, at a conference where Dan was presenting and, 
you know, uh, I knew what the experience was about from, you know, our initial foray into it. And, um, you know, as, as Brian and I were sitting there, we're like, okay, it's great that, you know, we've kind of got our toe in the water here, but, you know, the function of a, an athletic association or a league or, you know, a group of schools that have come together for student activities and or athletics is to, you know, facilitate bringing people together. And why, why could we not just do this as the Kensington Lakes Activities Association and, you know, have all of our member schools take part. And, you know, Dan was instrumental in terms of uh, coming to meetings uh, in the early going and, kind of explaining, you know, what the program is, how it works, um, different mechanisms to be able to fund and support uh, these students. And uh, it just, uh, you know, started as a little snowball that's uh, rolled into a, uh, a movement. That's awesome. So um, I know, Dan, you mentioned that uh, you partnered with MHSAA, and we know, John, the, through the KLAA League, uh, is obviously involved in this heavily. Are there any other um, schools, or how many other schools are involved uh, in Michigan doing this? And I'm assuming, is it, do you see that it is countywide or athletic league-wide, or is it just kind of depending on if the individual school wants to take it up or not? Yeah, so um, we traditionally, Traditionally, I've always worked kind of on a school by school basis, but with the um, innovation of, of unified interscholastic leagues, it, we really have been able to approach multiple schools in, in one setting and, and really get more schools on board through their conferences. If you look at unified champion schools as a whole, we, it's, you know, it's a K through 12 program. And so we have over 400 schools that are participating, not necessarily all of them in league play, but we have um, 65 schools now that are doing the wow. interscholastic unified leagues. Yeah, and that's just in three years. So our wow. first year, um, we started off with, with the KLAA and had about 10 schools. And then we were like, if we could double that and get to 20 in year two, we had 32. Um, and now we've, the, the momentum has been extremely exciting um, to see that growth uh, of how it's evolved. Absolutely. So can you, uh, either one of you, Dan or John, can you just kind of explain to people, um, you know, what does a unified basketball game look like? And I know the answer might be simple because it looks like a regular basketball game, but you know, I guess part of it is why do you think it, what makes it so special? Why, you know, why do you think uh, it, it's catching on and, and why do you think the, the students, you know, love it so much? You know, I'll start. I, I think uh, from from my view of it, um, and you know, I've worked uh, in athletic administration and, and grew up in it actually, uh, as as the kid of uh, um, you know of teachers and a dad who was an athletic director. This is sport in its purest sense, um, and you know, in today's day and age, uh, it seems like we get caught up in a whole lot of stuff that you know, really isn't all that important. And, you know, this initiative, I think, kind of brings people back to center. Um, you know, when you, when you come and, and you experience a unified sport contest, whether that's unified flag football, unified basketball, in the spring we run unified bocce, um, you know, there's just a, a ton of different opportunities out there. But, the you know, the common element is its purity in terms of, you know, just people coming together and supporting each other um, and, you know, respect for all. Um, and yeah, we're doing it through sport, but I will tell you, I haven't had to kick anybody out of a unified game. Um, <laughs> that's not necessarily the case, uh, yeah. you know, at a, at a varsity contest somewhere else on a Tuesday or a Friday night. And, you know, nobody's hollering at the officials. And, you know, I, I think it's just a real gal galvanizing um, type of proposition that once people walk in and yeah, there's some competitiveness to it. We just ran um, our second KLA unified basketball tournament uh, uh, over in Novi last night. And, uh, you know, the regular season is uh, one thing. And then, you know, we've added this postseason uh, element to it and yeah, it gets a little competitive out there, but yet, everybody's cheering for everybody, mm -hmm. um, you know, and so, yeah, it looks like basketball, 
absolutely um you know it's uh there's probably uh, a little less traveling called and a few less <laughs> foul calls and and those type of things and you know you'll see an opposing team hand the ball back to your your kids so they can take another shot and sometimes they awesome. hand it back a second or a third or a fourth time um and that kid ends up making a basket the crowd goes nuts so you know i that's kind of you know my my nickel description of it yeah and i think uh ryan to to your point how you asked the question you said you know i'm sure it looks like uh, a regular basketball game. I think that's why this relationship in, in the interscholastic with these leagues and, you know, when the JV and varsity teams travel, they're bringing their unified teams. And, but that's why it's so uh, powerful and it's, it's made such an impact because it is what high school athletics is. It's mm -hmm. the students running out of the, the bulldog mouth at, at Brighton when they come out, you know, the inflatable and it's, announcing their teams and warm-up music and you know traditionally with with uh with special olympics that's not necessarily what our tournaments always look like and so when you have students and they're in front of their their student peers and spectators and i'll remember the first game we ever went to it was uh brighton versus northville and we come walking into the parking lot and students had on you brighton unified shirts for the student section and then you walk in and there's a student section of of northville students with northville unified and um, yeah, you know, it's, it really is, and that's why it's been so successful, is partnering with our friends in, in these athletic departments. They know how to run these events, and they know how to run quality high school competition, and that's what it looks like. And like John said, sure, it, it, it may not be the uh, up and down, super competitive during the regular season, but the, the KLAA championship game last night was a one-point game that went down to the wire and uh, uh, one of the special education students, one of the athletes from, from Brighton hit two three pointers in the last minute to take the lead and students for it from Belleville, they were upset they lost, but yeah. at the end they all shook hands. They all uh, cheered each other on and took a photo together. And, and that's what it's all about. But it, it's, it's, it's like you said, it's high school athletics at its finest. I mean, you touched on this a little bit. So it sounds like the response to doing this has been positive. As you mentioned, it's such a positive environment, obviously for the, um, the, the, the student athletes that are, are taking part and the special needs students, they get to participate, you know, like I said, based on the footage I've seen, it's, you know, they're in the a varsity, you know, uh, Jersey, there's, there's real refs out there on the court the, the, with the striped shirts, we're keeping score. Like you said, there's student sections celebrating. How about the impact on the, the, um, the, the rest of the, the student body as well as maybe even the parents and community? Yeah, that's, uh, you know, that's really the magic ingredient. And that's really, I think what makes, uh, unified sports, uh, so special. I mean, we've talked about respect and we've talked about inclusion, but I would tell you, you know, I, I'm grateful to to have the opportunity to be on the MASSP podcast with you today because, you know, the message I want to get out to building principals and have them have with their athletic directors and other administrators is we need to do this. Not only because, yeah, it's good for the um, the students that are out there participating, um, both the uh, uh, students with disability and, and gen ed students but it just changes the culture of a building it changes the tone of the day-to-day -day schooling um you know it's it's i don't think any school out there doesn't want their kids to get along mm -hmm. um but you know sometimes again you know in the hustle and bustle of, of a school day and in every school all you know schools are Certainly different, but, you know, we're all alike in a lot of ways. You know, there's a, the cliques and the different groups. And, you know, you've got your athletes. You've got your performing arts students. You've got, you know, you name it. But, you know, from this standpoint, the message of, you know, respecting all and just being able to cultivate an, an atmosphere um, that can impact your culture in your building, mm -hmm. Unified Sports does that. And then what I've seen transcend is, you know, our kids are our best leaders. I mean, it's not old guys like me. <laughs> um, you know, truthfully, I mean, the unified movement in our school 
has transcended from just changing a culture and a tone in our building, which it has, um, and we've now implemented it in our middle school as well, doing unified sports there, but it's gone out into the community. I mean, people come to unified sports games, not just because, you know, they have a kid involved. Um, and so that to me is really where the power lies in unified sports uh, through uh, Special Olympics Michigan. Yeah, and I think what's exciting as well is that I think we're really just scratching the surface uh, with what we've seen in the last three years with, with these programs. And I know at the end of that first basketball league we did with the KLAA, you know, I said, you know, let's get together and, and talk about what we want to do next. And they're like, oh, we've already started. We're going to do a unified bocce next, you know, to kind, kind of open those doors to, to some mm -hmm. other uh, athletes and partners that have, don't play basketball. And so sport wise, we're growing. Um, I know if you look at, if, if you go to the uh, state semifinals for boys basketball at the MHSAA, you're going to see, we're going to have some unified teams out there at those uh, state semifinals kind of highlighting what unified sports is. They play at halftime. They do kind of a abbreviated oh, game, but no, you know, cool. that way it, it highlights the program. And you know, what's great about this, this program and the strategy is that it works. Um, it's a national program. So it's proven not just here in, in Michigan, but across the country. And uh, we do that. We seek out national data and 94% of the educators that um, are involved with this program have seen a reduction in bullying in their schools because wow. those students, yeah, they have a place, you know, they're part of, of a team now. And, and not only that, but their, their general ed students are, are sticking up for them and, 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 you know, they're on a team together. Mm -hmm. So they're teammates. And so uh, we're seeing those type of outcomes and I think, you know, from a parent standpoint, I had one of our coaches come up to me at, at one of the tournaments and say, I had a parent come up to me of a special education student and she was almost in tears. And she said, I never thought I'd have to buy my son basketball shoes, but we got to go out and, and purchase basketball shoes for him because oh, he's on the awesome. team. You know, I know. And wow. it's those, it's those small stories we had. Um, I'll tell one more real brief one. We had one of, I think one of the underlying things that people don't necessarily realize when when they hear about the program or when they first see it is the impact that it does have on those general education students um, and we hear time and time again from from our educators or from our students that it has just as much or a greater impact we had uh, and I have received an email a, a few months ago from one of our educators who runs the program and she said she has a student who was in the top 10 academically and um, her counselor said if you she was in a, they have a unified physical education course there that they were in. And she said, if you and switch from phys ed, unified phys ed over to um, an AP level course, you'll for, and you get an A in it, you'll for sure be in the top 10 in your class when, when you graduate. And she said, it's too important for me. And uh, they're paired up one-to-one, -one, her uh, fellow student that she was paired up with that I'm in this class. I appreciate it, but it means more to me to be in unified than than to finish in the top 10 and so wow i think those are the stories yeah you hear and you kind of get chills and it's yeah. like it's not just for one group of students it really is for mm -hmm. your entire building and and really your community as well that's great so uh what would you guys say is is next for it whether it be the unified basketball league or just the unified sports in general you kind of mentioned that this is available on on other types of sports and extra uh, extracurricular activities is it just getting more and more schools on board with this? Is it expanding out to, and just celebrate the even more sports? What, what do you guys see as kind of the, the next step? I think from our perspective with uh, Special Olympics Michigan, it's, it's both. We want more schools involved in this program because the impact that it makes. Um, and we're also seeing, like I said, an expansion in sports. You know, we're, we're seeing our schools come to us and say, Hey, we want to do flag football. We want to do, you know, we really want it to be part of that school's fabric. And, you know, sports is sort of the vehicle, unified sports is the vehicle that we use to create that inclusion in those buildings. And so I think we're seeing um, additional sports being, being added. And we're also seeing more and more schools involved in, and we really want to grow in, in both of those areas. So um, what's great about it as well is, you know, some of John's teams over at Brighton, they've even come to our state unified basketball finals and they've won state championships there. So it's not just done locally. It's done at the state level 
And we even had a, a group from Holt High School that traveled out to USA Games for Special Olympics and competed in Unified and won a gold medal. So, wow. uh, like I said, we're really scratching the surface, but there's a there's a lot of growth to be had with this program. And I think when you know John mentioned getting uh, administrators involved and schools on board, you don't have to start off with the league play piece. I think sometimes when we speak to our special educators or some of our uh, principals, they're a little intimidated by the sports piece. It's mm -hmm. okay to start small with this program, and you'll see the same amount of impact. What's going to happen is as year two, year three come, and those students get involved, and you get more uh, schools near you involved, you have the opportunity to really grow and add things like league play and, and really embrace it. So it's, it's, that's another message that we want to get across, that you can start in many different ways, and it's, it's an impactful program either way. Yeah, I think uh... – Dan's spot on there I could, because, you know, working in this business, if you're, you know, if you're a building principal or if you're an athletic director and, you know, maybe you're an athletic director and an assistant principal or director of transportation or, you know, school administrators are, are really, really busy people. And so when you talk to them about starting a new program, it's like, oh, one more thing to do. Yep. Um, it's really not that hard. And it's really not that complicated and it really doesn't take that much work. And, you know, I think being open to the conversation and knowing what, you know, the dividend will be on the back end in terms of the mm -hmm. culture you're building and the culture of your district and the culture of your community um, far outweighs the little bit of, you know, time and effort that, you know, uh, an administrator or, a smart administrator will go find some folks that will pitch in and help. So it's not on and all them too, but you know, that people need to know that, that y you can start small and still have a big impact. Like Dan said. That's a, that's a great point. And I would imagine too, that um, once you do get this off and running based on the, the positive impact it's ha it's having, it's probably, easier to grab refs for that than it is some of your other regular varsity con uh, contests because so many people want to pitch in and help. Oh, abs absolutely. And it's, and it's funny. Um, you know, we, um, we pay our unified officials uh, just as we would for any other event. Yep. And, uh, but I will tell you the number of times that somebody gets done uh, refing a unified game and says, Hey, John, just keep the check. Um, oh, I'm sure. You know, it's uh, it. You know, from that standpoint, like I said, uh, you know, when you first are exposed to it, um, and it's, you just realize that, like, wow, this is just the right thing. You know, it's that pure. That's right. I think I actually saw once at a, at a Novi Unified game. I think the superintendent, Dr. Matthews, was out there refing a game. You know, it's just. It's so cool to see. So, well, uh, guys, I, I don't want to take up all your time. So thank you so much for sharing that out. And I guess um, for the people that are listening right now, uh, if you get a chance, uh, check out one of these games. Go see it in person if you can, because it really is uh, such a, an, an amazing sight to see and experience. Um, John and Dan, I'll have John, maybe you go first. If they want to reach out to you, what would be the best way if they have some questions? Yeah, uh, to no, do so? no, I, a absolutely. And, uh, I would embrace, uh, getting phone calls, emails, what may have you, um, you know, my email address, uh, at Brighton is, uh, Tom's J at Brighton K 12.com. Um, if you go on our Brighton area schools website or, um, uh, you can just click my name and, and, the email will fill itself and, you know, reach out to me and, and I'm happy to help. I mean, uh, you know, from my standpoint, um, I'm proud of, you know, what we've done in Brighton and where we're going in Brighton, but it's really so much bigger than that. And, you know, having worked in education a long time, um, this is a program that truly makes a difference. So please uh, feel free to reach out. And how about for you, Dan, for those interested in maybe partnering and getting involved in the unified uh, uh, championship or uh, champions partnership there, how can they get a hold of you? Yeah. Um, and it, you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't say that this is a, a, a key part of our program here with Special Olympics Michigan. And um, we actually even have some starter funding for schools, so it doesn't necessarily have to cost them anything directly to get things started. So I'd be remiss if I didn't say that, but they can reach out to me 
Um, they can jump on our website at uh, www.somi.org, uh, or they can always send me an email, or they'll find my information on the website, but it's dan.ekonen, E-K-O-N-E-N, at somi.org as well. And just feel free to reach out, even if it's just a, a question or or uh, something where we can connect with you and, and set up a meeting with our team and we'll come out and share more about the program and ways you can get started. We're, we're really looking to grow. So. Great. Perfect. Well, again, uh, John, Dan, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time today. No, th thank you and uh, make it uh, a great rest of your day and weekend. Yeah, will do. Thanks for the opportunity. Yeah, thanks. So that'll do it for this edition of the MASSP podcast. Remember you can find uh, this podcast and all others on the MASSP website, go to MASSP.com slash podcast and also check for it to be published on social media. You can follow MASSP at MASSP or myself, Ryan Casey at R-C-A-Y-C-E. Thanks for listening, everybody, and have a great day.